Hello, everybody, and welcome to the October 7th episode of Trips and Traps. I'm Andy Serling, joined by Eric Donovan. And we got five races to uh, bring you this week. A uh, lot of uh, good racing from uh, last week, the uh, Jockey Club Gold Cup Day. Stakes races we're not really going to touch. I think they're pretty much straightforward. Some of them, you know, the turf, uh, the Joe Hurst Turf Classic, I think the result was a little fluky there, but uh, all in all, a good week of racing. Yeah, it was. It was. Of course, we had that the famous rain on Saturday afternoon, and we lost the turf races on Sunday. We'll get in some races, though, before we go into the big races, and we're going to start out with a race from last Wednesday, and it's the ninth race from Wednesday, and we want to look at a couple of horses, and uh, I mean, it may be relatively obvious stuff, but it's two horses that both get compromised at the start to begin with with, and one is the two, Naughty Kitty, who ends up finishing fourth, and another one is the four, Judge's Pride, you see steadying there, and the Yellow Silks, that horse finishes third. I think it was worse for Judge's Pride because she's more of a speed horse. Yeah, I would agree. Judge's Pride uh, took the worst of it uh, here at the start, and then we're going to see, uh, as we roll the tape, what Judge's Pride does after this. Uh, Rudy Rodriguez sends Judge's Pride up uh, toward the lead here, so uh, a little bit of a premature move uh, after the slow break here, definitely costing Judge's Pride. The problem with Judge's Pride is... She's Judge's Pride. She's one for 29. Right. Uh, we're not, you know, it's funny. I had kind of liked Judge's Pride a little bit in this race with the caveat that she's probably a horse at a price to try to get into the super because, as you say, she was one for 29. I think she was only one for 28 going into this race. But she's a horse that has had trips in her races. Now, we're going to catch Naughty Kitty, who settled in the back of the pack. And she broke a little slow, but she's not a big speed horse. I thought her trouble, you're going to see it right in here. As she's making a move to get in contention, she'll steady out in the inside. And those things don't look that bad on the pan. It's a tough one to see on the head-on because it, I would have shown it, but it happens right as the angle is switching on the turn, so you miss it. Judge's Pride, meanwhile, has already gunned up to the front end here and made a big move. Naughty Kitty, well in the back of the pack. Yeah, Naughty Kitty, uh, I think a horse that uh, compromised by the position, and it's so hard when you start making your move on the turn there, and then you, you get stopped right as soon as you start. You know, look at all the ground Naughty Kitty has to make up in here, and, and certainly Naughty Kitty runs a, a good race here to be fourth, uh, only beaten uh, about a length behind Judge's Pride. Yeah, and she wanted to angle out, too, and, and, and the, kind of the door got closed. Now she gets herself to the outside, and you see her there, she put in a nice run. Now, the problem with these turf sprints is you don't really want to have, and of course, the horse who finished the second, Hello Gold, made a big run here also to interrupt myself, but she also moved inside. It's tough to get these big closers, and Naughty Kitty runs out of steam at the end, but considering the trouble she had, she was compromised. Judge's case is the kind of, Judge's pride, I'm sorry, Judge's case is an old-time claimer that we all know well. Judge's pride is the kind of horse you'd love to play if this trip existed in isolation. The problem is with her resume of doing things and getting herself in trouble and not winning races, she's in good form now, and the other thing is... These horses are going to get one more race in all likelihood because turf sprints will be over in a few weeks. That's right. Uh, as we go into uh, the early part of October here, we have uh, basically th with three more weeks left uh, of turf sprints pretty much here at the beautiful Belmont Park. So uh, once we go over the Big A, they're going to have to stretch out, and a lot of those horses just can't do it. Yeah, but Naughty Kitty is a horse that I'd be very happy to play again if she was in a similar type spot. If she gets out of the gate, she gets a reasonable trip, I think she can easily beat this kind of field. Second race, uh, maiden claiming race from uh, October 2nd. This is uh, race number two. We're looking at the freight forward, who actually went off the 9 to 5 favorite in here for a trainer, Mike Hush, and this one uh, making a turf to dirt move in the race here in freight forward. You can't really see it uh, on the pan shot, but Stubble's pretty badly coming out of the gate here. And, and the way the race unfolds, I just think it totally played against freight forward. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Now, we're going to show freight forward here. She's in the white, whitish green silks dropping back, and she'll steady very, very shortly, and you can't really see it that well. You just see her dropping back, but you see, I think uh, John Velasquez wrote, and you see him taking hold of her. But we'll show you the head on the start into the turn. And it just as you pointed out, takes her completely out of position in this race. You've got a horse in front that, that ends up finishing second. The horse who wins the race is right outside of her right now. And, and Freight Forward just never gets contention. She's on the inside as we head into the, top, into the stretch, which you'll see shortly. She angles the outside and. All things considered, given the trouble and her position, she ran all right. She ran really well. The top two horses here just run one, two around the track. Uh, I mean, uh, goodness gracious, the uh, first time starter from the Dave Duggan barn sat off uh, Sham Roach a little bit uh, earlier on there. But uh, these horses are going to continue on through the stretch, and you can see where uh, Freight Forward uh, is at this point here. Still has a lot of work to do at this point. Yeah, there's a big gap back to her, and she's just not going to make up that ground. The other thing is, she's inside, and Johnny goes inside, and then he realizes, I'm not going anywhere there, and he has to sort of, you know, alter course a little bit. It, nothing major, but it all contributes together to part of the problem. And now when she finally gets to the outside in the clear, she put in a reasonable run. Nothing major, but she got beaten just about four and three-quarter lengths in this race. When you consider everything that happened, she's a horse that, given a fair chance, would have been much, much closer. And we'll just show you that head-on, and we'll see the stumble 
it's a pretty bad one. Yeah, pretty bad indeed. And uh, shift the horse shifts in a little bit uh, once uh, once she recovered from uh, that uh, mishap in the beginning there. So uh, definitely cost the horse position. You saw, you know, as we were talking about before, uh, with where the top two finishes were in respect to where Freight Forward is, just uh, very tough to overcome. And you see the steady right there uh, as she kind of gets uh, pinched back in between horses. Yeah, no, no question about it. She she had enough trouble that you know, given given a fair chance in a similar type field. I know this horse was nine to five, but maybe you don't see much of a trouble line in the running line, and maybe you'll get even a slightly better price. She's a better horse than it looks like for trainer Mike Hushin. One more race for the uh, first segment here, also on October 2nd. Race number nine, a maiden special weight for New York, but the two-year-old Phillies, we're going to take a look at the five precious penny here. Yeah, I, I, look, I'm not exactly sure what to say about this horse, but you see right now in the green silks, Edgar Prado comes out. She's sort of uncomfortable at the start. She blows the start. She's all the way back, basically second to last, because the 11 horse is dropping completely out, and she never gets comfortable. Now, we're not going to really show you the end of the race, but because she didn't do any running in the stretch, but she's out of position steadying the whole back stretch. Yeah, we we'll start to see the steadying here, nowhere to go for uh, Edgar Prado, and then a precious penny down the back stretch, lose a couple lunch there, you're going to have to uh, step on the brakes again uh, at another point here, and I think the key part to this race too is that uh, maybe not so much as the other race was, was pace control, the race we just showed you, but still uh, the winner just sitting second here, and the other horses that are going to finish in the top are you know, within the top six uh, at this point here. No, I, I think it's very important, because it's dynamics make the races, no doubt about it, and we already see this horse, Precious Penny, has stayed off the screen there. She comes in there. And you look at Prior Riding her, he feels like he's got a handful here, but mm. he's just holding on to her. Now, maybe does she give up? Is she ultimately empty? I'm not sure, but she's a horse that's run three times. She met some tough maiden special weight New York bred fields in her other races. Don't forget, this is an off-the-turf race, but boy, I just feel like this poor horse hasn't had a fair chance. In her debut, she ran pretty well with some trouble. She just hasn't had a fair chance. She's discouraged. She's had about enough. I'd love to see her get one fair trip in her races and show what she's made of because I'm convinced she's a far better horse than she shows in her PPs. Very well, Mike. I wasn't thrilled with the way that it uh, finishes up here. You know, I think it leaves a little something to be desired, but you know, you consider the trouble, the steadying down the back stretch, and how the, pace, the race was kind of controlled by the top six horses there. You know, I guess you really couldn't expect her to do all that much running in the stretch. Yeah, you almost wonder if both she and the rider kind of gave up at the end when she was hopelessly beaten. But, but Precious Penny is one in a, in a similar type field. Well, maybe she'll drop into a, to a high price claiming New York bred maiden race and because it's not like she shows a lot mm -hmm. I, I think she can get the job done and be a very big price that does it for the first episode of trips and traps we do want to remind people that email address is trips and traps at nyrainc.com we love to hear your thoughts give us a little help on the show keep them coming and thanks for watching come on back for the next segment